Taylor Decker, if you can believe it, has been with the Lions for seven years. So he was here with the last few years of Caldwell, then went into Patricia and how bad that was. And then the first year with Dan Campbell and a whole new change of direction. Uh, it's just he's been here and he's been here through a lot. And last offseason, he kind of came out with some frustrations about just negative. He called it negativity around his name. Does he want to be here? Is he going to get traded? Just and it's all frustrating, right? Well, after the Jets win, he came out and he tweeted something that was really cool. He said, coming off this tough, gritty road win, I want to I want to say the outpouring of love over the last few weeks or so has, um, sorry, I want to say that the outpouring love over the last week or so after being transparent about frustrations in the past has been overwhelming. I say that in the best sense of the word, I probably received a hundred direct messages alone from Lions fans that confirmed what I already knew, but haven't said our fans are awesome. I won't let a few bad apples distract me from that. You guys deserve a team to be proud of all positivity and excitement. If I didn't respond to you, I promise I read every single message sent and I love you guys. Pretty cool. Just winning changes things right we, we know that but um when you win hey lions fans right hey hey taylor love you he's he's happy but it's really true we really do appreciate taylor decker it's interesting because he's a left tackle he's solid as can be but when you're not winning you know whatever right you just don't pay attention to that but when you're now you're part of that left tackle now you've got p- p- uh Panay on the right side. You've got Frank in the middle. You've got our guards who have been a little bit interchangeable, but you still have Jonah. You still have Skipper. You know, Big V's been out since the beginning of the year. Guards have been good. Evan Brown. And now if you got this the best offensive line against the Jets, we do not give up a single sack. And if you watch that game, you know, man, this Jets team's tough. Linebackers are good. Secondary is good. They get pressure. But between Jared Goff and the offensive line, don't give up a sack in that game. And it was really cool to see because our offensive line is playing really well. And so I just want you to see this here. This is Taylor Decker. um, Seven seasons, seven seasons. And aside from two of the seasons, he plays most of the games, if not every game. So I always think of him as kind of maybe not, not injury prone, but. If you would have asked me, I would say, yeah, he's kind of been in and out with injuries. Not really. Only two seasons here in 17 and 21 was he out. Remember that 17 season before the season he got injured? Same thing with 21. But no, he's he plays, and then throughout the whole season, he has, I'd call it, what, three or four false starts the entire season. He holds once or twice the entire season. Sacks allowed anywhere from three to five over here on this column, the entire season. He's just rock solid. We don't give him enough credit. We we don't give him and Frank Ragnow enough credit. And those are the two guys that are just anchors on our team, the veteran guys that we're building around. We're all excited, and we talk a lot about the other guys. Kirby Joseph, obviously, Aiden Hutchinson. You know, name the rookies, the new guys. The, but there are – we have really solid – dudes and uh it's come a long way on our offensive line remember we had dominic riola he's flipping off the crowd and it's just in offensive line wise we've gone through a lot of ups and downs with our offensive line and i remember years where the quarterback would just get snowed under i mean you know the push was so great you don't see that you do not see the push up the middle frank's got that covered on the outside think about this you can now you know, you do, you always got to have extra resources on the outside. Just, it doesn't matter how good you are at tackle. You need those extra chip blocks or an extra tight end just a little bit, just because the defensive ends are so good, so fresh, athletic, but we, if you watch, we rarely do that unless it's a max protect going to take a shot, but we rarely do that against the Vikings. Um, I can't think of his name, but great defensive end. Panay took him on one-on-one for that DJ Chark touchdown. We don't have to put the resources out there. Bring it one-on-one. We can pass block and pass that so good. And so just to see Frank excited, uh, excuse me, to see Taylor excited to be here and to win and play meaningful games and to see those guys post-game in the locker room, it, it's it's a nice feeling from 
you know, you're not winning offensive line doesn't get credit or you just, you know, it's, it's just hard when you don't win, but when you win and you win six of seven, yeah, good feelings, good thoughts are flowing. So it's awesome to see. So let me know in the comments, your thoughts on this offensive line doesn't get enough credit, especially Frank and Taylor who do not get enough credit. Um, and you kind of forget about them. You just do. You, you, you think about the big plays on the outside, Chark, St. Brown. But these guys are the real core of what we've been doing over the last eight weeks, uh, really all season. I mean, right, all season, now that now that the defense is playing better, we're, we're turning these um, offensive performances into victories, and the, the team is just rolling. So let me know your thoughts in the comments, and we will see all of you on the next one.